Hi, my name is Hannah. Welcome to Indie Buzz Rocks. I'm really honored today to introduce a lovely, most beautiful singer. Her name is Ryder Terry. We all know her as Ryder. I'm just going to wait a minute for her to click on so when I see her name, hopefully she'll um, join really soon. <laughs> I'm super excited. I'm super nervous. She, I don't know if you've checked out her videos online, but she is um, a beautiful singer. So without further ado, I hope she comes on. Hi, thank you Kiki me Mama and Boardwalk Doggy for joining. I'm excited to see you. Oh, there she is. She joined on. So let me wave to y'all, join her in. And um, how do I invite her again? Oh, ooh, where does the join person? Oh, wait a minute. Please don't make that difficult for me. View request, go live. Thank you, my dear. Did you get on? Ha, huh. I clicked it. Shoot. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Oh, there we go. I think we figured it out. Sorry, I think everybody it's about that. Connected. Did you, you get it? The, are you on the Wi-Fi? Uh, oh, no, actually. But it's good. How would you want to turn your screen? There we are. There we are. What's oh, up, darling? did it. Hi, beautiful. Good to see oh, you, sweetheart. I'm so How nervous. How are you Can you see I'm me well? So I can see you really well, yeah. You're oh, nervous. Yeah. I'm nervous. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, yeah. I didn't want to tell you I was nervous. So I've been trying not to say anything about it. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's all good. How are you today? Um, I'm good. Yeah, nervous. It's all it's gone in my head. <laughs> oh, good. Look at that. It's all good. We're looking live. We got people joining in. What's up to the people? Woo -hoo. I see a lot of people in there. They go so quickly. We're getting them in. Hi. Jay Wolf, I shout out to Jay Wolf, one of the best guitarists in the game. Jay Wolf. Woo -hoo. Ooh, hi. Yeah. We got Ronnie Nails in the building. We'll, he'll say hello later. Little West Wise Nails. He'll say hello a little bit later. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Hi. Hey. I'm so excited. I have no idea. You're all new new people. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Um, and then we're sponsored by uh, Twisted Tea tonight. So there we go. Oh, Cheers. Twisted Tea and um, Ryan. What you got over there? <laughs> Proper. Look at that. And we got, oh my God, I love it. Can you hear oh, it? There we go. That's the, uh, yeah, that's what we did last few months ago. Yeah, me and Ronnie hit that up. That's going to be this uh, Sunday. I'll tell you more about it a little bit later. But yeah, expect more of that. Is this a Sunday at Venice West? Sunday at the Venice West. We're called a little R&R. &R. If you're asking, just Ryder and Ronnie. And we're kicking in the tunes just to make you feel a little groovy and good, you know? Look at that. You hear it. You know you want it. And as you can see, I'm in the same place right now. <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. You know, I appreciate it. Appreciate you so much. <laughs> For you here. <laughs> oh. Robin. Love it. Are you not so beautiful? I would play the whole thing. It's like four minutes, so I didn't want to. Well, now we, good. now we got it. We got it on the YouTube. We're adding more videos soon, but go check it out. The, the Ryder Terry No Man Wolf Pack YouTube. We got it covered. Got it covered. Did you write that song? No, no. Uh, no, actually, that's uh, Sweater Weather. That's Sweater Weather that's by um, God, The Neighborhood. Name. The but the yeah. yeah, there we go, The Neighborhood. I I forgot. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. And we'll probably perform that actually this Sunday too. So it's a good one. Apparently, weather weather is a lot. 
as a favorite for uh, my fans, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a big favorite of this fan over here. Yeah. <laughs> Check out Nashville. Yes, there we go. And I got a song coming out I called should. Nashville, actually, too. Huh? Yeah. The house. Hey, love. Look at that. We love oh. you, Rev. We love you. We yes. got all the, we got Venice peeps in the house. Woo -hoo. Nice. We are kicking ass. Oh, okay. Sergio's in it. Sergio's in here. Time to drop it. Cancel it. Oh. Cancel it. Cancel it all. Oh no, I was getting ready to break into my Sergio jeans commercial. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, all right. My goodness. Your first question. All right, what is it? Hit me with it. Are you, do you are ready? Do you want an easy one or like a really deep one? Cause... Ooh, all right, hit me with the easy. Let's go soft first. Okay, so we'll, we're born and raised. <laughs> born and raised. I'm born and raised here in Los Angeles, born California. Look at that. <laughs> born and raised here in Los Angeles, California. Um, I was actually born on uh, Pico and Crenshaw and uh, raised over in Venice Beach, California. My mom worked in Santa Monica, so I literally was in Venice Beach every day, skate at the skate park with the homies. Uh, that's basically where I grew up and learned everything about life. Um, so yeah, I'm basically all over Los Angeles, but mostly LA, or I mean, Venice Beach. That's beautiful. I'm so yeah. happy to know that. You know, I really had no I wasn't sure. I felt it, but I didn't know. So I'm happy to know that you're... Yeah, a lot of people get the, the Venice vibe from me, for sure. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you know, your vibe, by the way, is, like, so, like, immaculately glorious. And you're just, oh, like... I appreciate glorious. that. You're I glorious. appreciate you. Yeah, you are. I appreciate you, too. Okay, but I wanted to tell you that that question... Wait. Um, the, the next... Um, <laughs> okay, I did to say that you were saying you were from like your people were all over this land. And yeah, so all over. It goes Basically, I'm like the human form of a Beyonce song. My daddy, Alabama. My mom, Louisiana. Um, but you know, I'm born out here in California, um, and like space is all over. But basically consider myself a California, but I have family literally all over the States, a little bit in a different country. So, yeah. Well, I, it, it really um, makes me want to ask the question, what have you learned about people? Ooh, now that's a good and a big question. What have I learned about people? People not only are just very interesting, but like almost impossible to read. I've learned you can, you feel like you might know a person so well, but you never know what's really going on in the back of their mind or what's their, you know, what's their path or what they're going through or exactly what they're all about. And that just can be from your best friend or somebody you see in passing. Um, something else I've learned about people, actually a pretty. Oh no, you're frozen. She's going around in a circle. She Let's see. Are we good? Uh, good. We're back. Are you there? No. All right. There we in. go. Damn it. Phew. Sounds like Wi-Fi. Okay. Do we take two? There we go. <laughs> I think we're back. We're back. Wi-Fi. That's the worst part about California. Everybody's on the Wi-Fi all the time. All the time. Uh, I'm. It's so true. Okay. <laughs> so shall we? But you've learned, you were talking about what you've learned about yeah, people so how also you never know. Like, right. And also that um, I was just saying that people, I feel like people are pretty free or learning to be free. Uh, we've lived in such a society and a space where it's just like you learn to do what you do, keep your head down and you maybe make it to the top one day. But um, as we've grown older and I'm, I feel like especially because we're all locked up in the house for a year and a half with COVID, when we came out, we came uh, with a raging bull basically. And it's just uh, this empowerment, this freedom to do whatever the fuck you want. 
once you reach that goal, like you don't know if tomorrow's promised. So I've seen a lot of people open up over the last year and it's really beautiful to see. I know it was a very traumatic experience for a lot of people, but I feel like a lot of things did grow from that traumatic experience. So people are interested. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that's really beautiful what you said about not knowing, you know, what they're going through at every at any given moment. And, um, right. and really, I think it kind of boils down to like not judging, you know, like, you got to just walk with your heart kind of. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Just vibe out. And that's, yeah. how I, that's how I go about my life. Like, of course, you have to make these uh, important decisions and all that time. But I'm really just follow with my vibe and just go with the flow. It's very corny to just say sometimes, but that's how I go. I don't have a real itinerary. I'm just going with my vibe. <laughs> I, I, I think that's important because, um, you know, when you do go with the flow, that, that it's a guidance, you know, as soon sure. as, as you kind of get this indecision or this, this doubt thing going through, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're I mean, you might have chosen the wrong step, but the minute you get a little bit of that doubt, you you um, you lose sight of the of the of the beauty of what yeah. you're doing. Yeah, mistakes are meant to be made. Mistakes are meant to be made. That's how you learn. That's how you get better. But what's the point? If you don't grow from it. That literally turns into insanity. Like that's the whole point of going past that and growing to it. So we're yeah. all getting there. We're all doing our baby steps, but we're all getting there in this crazy ass world. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Yeah. All steps, big dreams. And thinking yeah. cheers to us. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> cheers to us. Sponsored by again, I forgot what you're drinking. Oh, sponsored by Twisted Tea, uh, hard iced tea, uh, if you will. I don't know the percentage. It's a 12 ouncer. I'm going to say there's probably 5% in here, but it's good enough for me. Okay, okay, go get you one. Go get you one. <laughs> I know about it. Not my Oh, yeah, free sponsorship. Uh, <laughs> free sponsorship. Why not? Okay. Well, this is beautiful. Are you ready for your next question? Let's do it. Can you share with us an earliest childhood memory? Ooh, earliest childhood memory. At the moment, I would like to say when I went to my first. And it actually has to do with music, I guess. I went to my first Radio Disney concert. Do you, I don't oh. know if you remember the radio station, Radio Disney, but yeah. you know, yeah, it was like 7, 10 a.m. radio. And um, I had a lot of favorites back then, obviously I was four years old. Um, but yeah, that was probably you the earliest old. memory I have. Yeah, and me, my mom took me, I think it was somewhere a little bit, like an hour or two out of LA. Um, and I probably had the biggest smile on my face watching, I think the band was called Nobody's Angel. And there were just like four hot chicks kicking ass. That's probably why I'm gay now. Uh, it was just four hot chicks just breaking it down, singing and choreographing. And I was just like so into it. So I think that was probably my earliest memory. That or watching The Lion King on repeat tremendously oh, oh are you not so sweet how when did oh, i can see you in your little jammies watching it watching oh yeah it. Uh, yeah they couldn't pull me away from the tv I actually broke the vhs because i watched it so much on repeat that it just like shattered so yeah i'm skilled i'm talented Our <laughs> <laughs> skill. and that goes to my next question what was the first song that you learned to sing Ooh, probably, it was probably a, a church song because I grew up in the choir. So oh. I did choir from about four to, damn, probably like 21. Um, maybe a little bit further after that. But um, yeah, I went from a church choir that was uh, in LA right off Jefferson and Crenshaw. Holy name of Jesus. Whoop, whoop. Hallelujah. Whoop, whoop. Um, Pray. <laughs> yeah. So I ended up going there, and uh, that was probably, it was probably some kind of church hymn, but like outside of the church, it was probably um, Brownstone, uh, If You Want Me, which is a very different song than church. Okay, but well, it's like, yeah, Brownstone, If You Want Me, like, if you want me, say, if you need me, do it. I don't know if you remember that song, but it was I, a fire song. 
And I was like trying to hit notes the whole time in the back seat of my car seat. So that was probably one of the first. In the car seat. So you were like three. Oh, I was trying to hit notes in the car seat. I was I was fully there. Didn't know I wanted to do music at all, but when wow. when you're alone in the back seat, you're just grooving. You just gotta hit that note. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. And do you the church hymn? Yeah, the yeah, the first church hymn. I wish I could remember which one it was, but we learned so many. We had to do like maybe about ten songs within that mass. So we had like the twenty third psalm to just like singing over prayers. I can't remember them all right now, but yeah, okay. mostly probably a church hymn. Okay, well, we'll I'll, in, in honor of the church hymn, we do not have a church here in Venice anymore. They're all shut yeah. down. So yeah. I want there's the pink one on the corner. I don't know what happened. If, if oh, I don't know either. You've got some hood hood roots, so maybe we can get yeah, a little. Definitely, definitely. We got to bring a little bit of church back. Yeah. I'll start my own church. Rider, Rider's Church of, not chicken. <laughs> I was gonna say chicken. That's bad. Uh, we'll figure it out. I don't know. Uh, let me, let me think about it. Let me. Yeah, that's that's a that's a put it up in the air bubble. <laughs> yeah. Let's really get some more. more. <laughs> uh, are you ready? Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um. 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 Um, okay, do you have um, some of the happiest lyrics ever written? Or would you like to share with us some of the happiest lyrics you've ever written? Ooh. I'm trying to think or the happiest. Of life. You know what's so funny? I feel like a lot of the songs I've written have been more on the soppy side, well, that's which is hilarious. That's the other question. So you can choose it either way if you want. First, it's happy okay. and status. So, Ooh. or you can on if you wish. You know what? Watch this. I'm gonna grab my notebook. Let's see. Right. Versus the status. All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you so Ooh. much. I saw like of y'all up there. I just wanted to say let's get much. real. Let's get let's get super sad. Let's get. <laughs> Let's get super sad, you know? Cause fuck it. Wait. That's probably not even that sad, but. Try. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So this is one, it's actually one of the earlier songs I wrote, not too bad. Um, but it was literally, I was, I was moving out of a situation at the time. And so this is what I wrote. Uh, blinded by your light for far too long. I ain't really weak but we ain't too strong. Flying off your wings till you threw me off. Gotta find my own path, so I'm moving on. It's very simplistic lyrics that I kind of jam to that aren't covers, but at the same time, that was one that kind of hit me deep. I wrote it probably in about five minutes, like the whole song in about five minutes, because that's how I kind of work. Sometimes I'll go a whole like, two weeks, three weeks, just like no words coming to me. I feel like I have complete writer's block for a little bit and it's really annoying. And then sometimes you kind of just like, you're in the zone. I think I have to physically put myself in the zone. It's like the blessing and the curse of a lot of artists out here where it's just like, yeah, you are living, you know, art is life, life is art. You're living through your lyrics. And so sometimes it's hard for me to write happy songs. I feel like I can't put them together I just, I, as much as I want to. It doesn't match up for me. But when I'm stressed out or angry or anxiety written, I'm real quick to just jot it all out. Act it to let it out. Now, are you able to share it right away? Or do you have, you know oh, what I mean? I, for a while, I couldn't. For a while, I really couldn't because I try to be such a perfectionist when it comes to my music, at least. And I get way too in my head about it. And then, so I met this cool guy named Ronnie, who you'll meet in a minute. And That's like meeting guys like him and uh, being in like their presence, they also do music. They kind of reassure me that, you know, or they just tell me, get the fuck out of my head. Sometimes it's just needed. And yeah. accept your lyrics for what they are. You know, words come to words. You can move a word around here or a sentence or something like that. But for the most part, I've, I've learned that I'm in my head a lot, which is what we all do sometimes. But um, yeah. we figure it right. out. 
It's steps. It's about the heart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we, fi we yeah. figure it out. But even though most of these songs are like a little soppy, I'm so proud of these songs and how they've turned out so far. Um, I'm really excited. To yeah. Hear I haven't heard you. And you have a, a kind of happy, lovey-dovey one I'm going to perform on Sunday called Nashville. So that one's a little bit more pumped up or whatever. That's cool. Is there, <laughs> um, share with us a little bit, like a lyric of that song or chorus? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you guys, <laughs> I'll give you guys the first lyric. It's, uh, I got a Nashville thing. She down to show me her country swing. You know, I keep a California baby who want to run me through her valleys. That's the first lyric. Ooh. You can get the rest on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's getting hot in here. Yeah, that one's a little... Yeah, oh, girl, you're gonna have to. <laughs> so yeah, it's a it's a weird array of songs that I have, but we're we're building something out of it. <laughs> that's that's um, you got it in there. You got it. Wow. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, I, I'm kind of I'm blown away how you were talking about the the um you're in your minds a lot, you know, and mm -hmm. you surrounded yourself with people that have allowed you to remember how to breathe through your heart. And that right. kind of back to that whole thing of the, of the double mind, you know, like, right. really, it's so hard. To, it's really hard, but you have to be around people who are going to literally like, not only support you, but can literally make you better. And you get that growth from that. So now I don't feel as crazy when I walk in here with a song idea and I'm not like overthinking it in my head. I can just be like, Hey, what do we think? How does it sound? You know, nine times out of ten, we're good. <laughs> so you got, you got <laughs> the other one, we'll we'll work uh, on it. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yes, you will. You are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you ready for your next question? Let's do it. Okay. What do you think about the words heavy and love? Ooh. Now, singles coming out soon. Oh. Oh, heavy and love. I like that. Well, two, two in my head, two the same, almost. I love, I love hard. That's something that I do for everybody, whether it's somebody I'm with or something like that. So I love pretty heavy, I do. Now, at the same time, they're pretty separate at the same time, don't get me wrong, but I feel like they do attach each other, if this makes yeah. sense. First person, that, it's interesting, you, you can, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, you're supposed to. I feel like it's supposed to get a little heavy. This makes you know. It yeah, has to. that's real love. So when you when you say um, the love is hard, you mean like you're coming in hard, like coming. yeah. I mean you come in hard. I mean it's a it's a it's a struggle. Sometimes you're building something with somebody else, whether it be a friendship or romance or whatever it is. You might have a little stumble here, but that's because you're learning each other. And it gets a little heavy at, some, or at times, but for the most part, I kind of think they go hand in hand. Very different words that you wouldn't really think they go hand in hand, but you just I mean, I know I love pretty heavy. Yeah. yeah. All my friends know that I love them. That's how, <laughs> that's how that works out. That is 100% true. 100%. Yeah. Time I see you, it's like giant love. Just <laughs> And it, you get a hug or you get a smile. That's it. That's it. Yes. It's an Unless you owe me money. And then you can <laughs> give me my money and then I'll give you a hug and a smile. Then that's good. <laughs> that's a beautiful. Um, your next question. Yeah, let's do it. What has been one of the um, most scariest emotional times in your life? And how did you um, get from that to... Scary and emotional probably around the time my mom had breast cancer, which was about a few years ago. She's a breast cancer survivor as of the last like three years. Whoop, whoop. And it's still the month, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I'm we still got it. So basically, but if this was back in, I wanna say like 2013, um, when she ended up getting it and that was, hard on everybody in the family but especially me and her who lived in the same house like that's my best friend known her my whole life obviously that's my mom but <laughs> so it definitely it hit it hit us hard
but it uh, I think we grew a lot from that as well. But that was definitely an emotional, uh, stressful time, but actually a beautiful time for us as well, just bonding, getting together, um, learning how to be more like safe with your body and all this stuff, just take care of yourself, learning more about my health. Um, you know, I come from a family that's uh, like from New Orleans, we know how to cook and stuff real, real good. And we know how to party. We definitely know how to hit a Jack Daniel shot. I Brit, we all do in Venice. It's amazing. But <laughs> we have to learn how to like take care of ourselves in these better ways. And so I, I think I, I learned a lot from the emotional and stressful times. But it was definitely tricky, for sure. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I feel like that was probably the hardest. But I definitely that's when I started uh, getting more into music like learning how to play more guitar um because i was at the house a lot with her so she'd be in the room and i'd be practicing guitar and i think that was one of our first videos my mom snuck and like took of me singing in the front room or like recorded and so she's like you should post it it's fine the, the it was like one, around that same time the one that you did the britney spears cover song for? um no that one um, the first one i ever learned i think was Life of Stone by Audio Slave, Chris Cornell, R.I.P. You know, beautiful singer. Yeah, he's my favorite singer in the whole wide world. Right. Um, so I learned one of his first, and it's a very deep and intense song, almost about like passing on, which is pretty crazy. So I like to torture myself <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> I guess. So I learned that as my first song, and um, that's honestly one of my favorite songs to play, even that I. You know, we, we it's it's a good song. So I attached myself with that, and that's why I really started to like focus in and realize maybe I should really focus on music as well because I want to make it for my mama. I know that, and I want to make it for myself too. Yes. Well, you yeah. actually have gifts to sing that you you need to make it for the world. Yeah, the world. I gotta use it. I did not see that for a long time. Like I got blessed with some lungs and some beautiful fingers, so I might as well put it to use. Yes, you have been very blessed. We are yeah. very blessed. Yeah, I super. Know you. You're yeah, there we go. You're just, you're just a delight of, of life. <laughs> the light of life. Um, are you ready for another question? Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you know to be absolutely true, 100% true in this world? Ooh, taxes aren't ever going away. <laughs> Death is inevitable, and uh, what else do I know absolutely true about this world? You can ruin a cheeseburger. It can be done. It's the greatest meal of all time, but you can ruin that. Oh. Um, what else do I know? Passion exists. Passion exists within everybody. That There's a lot of people I look at, and that's what I do realize about everybody. Like Everyone has a passion about something, whether it's like literally music, you're gonna be a pastor, you're gonna be outside. I literally see this guy in Venice who has a speaker and he just spins around with his dreadlocks. He's actually on YouTube, he's pretty famous on YouTube. He just spins with his dreadlocks and he's, I've never seen such a happier man. Exactly, <laughs> such a happy dude. And I'm like, that is his passion, bringing joy to other people's faces because he sees me smiling, he sees other people smiling like, that guy's having a good fucking day. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So. I feel like that's a one thing for sure. Yeah. 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 What I'm discovering is um, I'm not, it, it's, it's, it, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go on. Passion, my, it's like if you're not doing it, once you know what it is, or once mm -hmm. you know that thing, whether it's skateboarding or painting or singing or, right. or, or twirling, you know, yeah. once you find. <laughs> That moment of that passion, it just, um, you're you're in a bad mood if you're not doing it. Right, exactly. But I feel like, you know, and that's when you start inviting, like, really negative spirits into the, into your vibe or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So, and I think the virus has been so good to help that become our world instead of the anti-activity. Right. World. <laughs> right, exactly. You're Actually, able to see that. You're able to see that. You can see what they're focused on, what they're really going for. And that's how you can determine who you really want to be around and how you want to grow and you know support yeah. yourself with. 
Yes, that's yeah, another. Sure. That's intense. Okay, wait. Are you ready for another question? Hell yeah. Um. Oh. Um. Oh wait, did I ask this? What was the first song you ever wrote? Oh, the first song I ever wrote. Oh, it was probably. Oh, it was some Avril Lavigne sounding song. I remember because I threw it away because I was like, "This is corny." 